So thank you, uh, thank you for that uh, for that raid, J Man. Uh, you and the others. Hey, get comfy, get a snack and a drink. Even if you've never played D and D or you don't know how to build a character, I'm gonna take you through it step by step. And and you know what? You don't even need to watch. You know, if you have some dishes to do, if you have to, you know, if you're if you have to go driving or something, um, you can just listen, almost like an audio book. Just sit back and imagine the character as we're going to build uh, him or her step by step. And if you want to contribute thoughts or ideas, then you're welcome to do so. Because this isn't my character. This is our character that we're building together. A dwar yeah, there is a dwarven army and a female barbarian clan. <laughs> Shield maidens. <laughs> All right, so while Pouty Lips uh, and Orog, an Orog or a, a Goblin Fighter, all right, I'll see what I can do here, Pouty Lips, and um, and we'll go from there. So, uh, Pouty, I very much appreciate you visiting our, our miniature orphanage and adopting a couple. And uh, we'll see who sneaks onto the truck out your way. <laughs> hey, hey, don't thank me. I, I have to thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate your consideration and your business. And I want to make sure that you're having fun and we're supporting the game that we're teaching. And uh, and not just that I'm selling you stuff, because you can, you can buy stuff anywhere. I want to make sure that you are getting what you're looking for. And if you need help designing an encounter with them, or if you have a question on maybe alternate uses for something, uh, kind of like Derek was talking about, you can use the miniatures we're, we're cracking open uh, from Ravnica as, uh, you know, you might be able to use something like this in Innistrad as well. So any way I can help you out, please let me know. And uh, when I can, I will... I'll do so. Okay, so handy dandy role guide here. This is normally for the player's handbook, which is one of the core rule books. Uh, we are going to be replacing some of the information with the Ravnica book, which we have right here. So if you have one at home, you can follow along in the book, or I have it large and on screen so you can... You can go over the information. Any time during the character creation process, if you have questions about d and it doesn't even have to be about Ravnica. Um, you could even say, hey, I'm a new player, and what do you suggest for getting started? That, you, uh, just because I'm, I don't know, I was about to say lecturing on something. I, I don't want to think I lecture. Uh, but just because we're going over a certain theme of material doesn't mean we can't stop and answer other questions or... Uh, you know, if any of you want to sponsor a box of minis or things along those lines, then um, you're welcome to do so. This is interactive. We're all sitting down at a table in a game store and we're having fun. We're talking and using our imaginations. Pouty, so Maddie, I, uh, Pouty Lip says, so Maddie, I've been, I have to be honest. I watched while working on my other screen, 450 ads to get the bits. That That is dedication. And hey, you know what? It uh it worked for you, right? You're if you you're going through and you're grinding ads on the side, and that turned in and and, and so that helped both of us. Not only is that going to put minis on your table, but then that also helps support the channel and my investment in you know equipment and uh, and other things uh, to continue to bring you this this community in the best way that I can. And uh, hey, you know what? Other people might want to run ads on the onto the on the side of uh, what's going on, because you know what? You just so you know Twitch paid you thirty four bucks, uh, which you know you're you're passing on to another streamer, and you're gonna be getting some. I mean, hopefully, if you ever support a streamer through a subscription, like J Man, thank you so much for that. I I sincerely appreciate your subscriptions and your subscriptions buy boxes of minis to give away at a monthly raffle. Okay. Um, I appreciate it. You're supporting the, your community, but in this case, you're also helping your, yourself along with uh, along with the streamer. And so, 
it's symbiotic and everyone wins. So there we go. That is definitely dedication there, everyone. <laughs> All right, let's get our random roll guide going. I'm going to roll to see if we have a female character or a male character with a percentile die. So one to 100, right? 58. We have a male character. Now, normally I would roll a nine. Well, I mean, I'd roll a 10 sided die and I'd re-roll the, the 10. Um, but we would have nine choices in... Uh, nine choices in the player's handbook. Ravnica, however, um, we are sticking to just what is available inside of Ravnica for races. And so if we come here to uh, 12. I'm going to ignore human and elf because you can find those in the player's handbook. I would like to stick with just what we could generate, especially in the Ravnica world. So that's going to start us with, uh, that's going to give us a, a D6 of options. So once we go back up to the top here. Party, race, and class. There we go. Okay. Centaurs, goblins, loxodons, minotaurs, simic hybrids, and videlkin. Let's roll a d6 and figure out which special race we're going to be using. Two. We have a goblin. So we have a male goblin. And their size is small. S-M-O-L, small. Come down here. A goblin starts their height at three foot five, and we're going to add two d four inches, six inches, uh, so three foot eleven inches. We are going to take uh, the same six, multiply it by one pound, and add it to our base weight. And so, at forty one pounds and three feet eleven inches. Uh, we have our goblin. Let's scroll down. Here we go. Goblins. Uh, our age. Let's see. They reach adulthood around eight. They age notably faster than humans. And though few goblins live to old age, the most cautious rarely live longer than 60 years. So let's find out where in our life cycle our goblin is. We're going a little out of order due to the, the special presentation here. I'm going to roll a percentile die, and we're going to find out where in the life cycle our character is going to be. 68. Uh, we have a middle-aged goblin. And if they can live until... Uh, if they can live until... Uh, 60, then that's going to put them around, uh, that's going to put them around, uh, and, and they, they mature more quickly. It's almost like a dragonborn. So we can probably use our dragonborn stats here, uh, to replicate, uh, and we might have to compress it a little bit, to, but we can replicate a goblin's random age. You know, if you're building a character at home, you don't have to randomly determine your, your size, or not your size, your, your weight and your uh, height, or how old your character is. We do this because we're leaving everything open to our imaginations. We want to interpret, uh, interpret the results we get in order to create this organic character that we have to consider all parts of. Um, you know, if we, build, if we build a fighter with a certain set of stats that is young and spry and, you know, late teens, early 20s, as compared to a fighter that has the same stats, but maybe is, you know, 53 in, hu you know, a human, let's say that can have a big impact. You know, what is the, what's the uh, personality difference? Like, even if everything else is the same, except the age. So we want to make sure we're considering all of this for our character because we want a character. We don't just want stats that we're going to, 
you know, throw dice and and just sort of narrate in a, in a third-party fashion. We want to build someone that we're going to get into their skin, and we are going to pilot them through an adventure as if we were our, we were there ourselves. You do have a question, kind of a big question. If I want to pump out a lot of damage compared to all other classes, is a ranger a good option in your opinion? Um... I have only made one character, so I need some help because this campaign is almost over. I I can't tell you offhand, Pouty Lips. I I don't I don't do min max for like maximum damage builds or you know how to how to get the best speed build or anything along those lines. So that goes a little bit outside of my expertise, um, and that also depends on the type of damage that you're seeking to deal. If you're looking for weapon damage, then well, Ranger might be able to provide it, um, but you know, are you going to be facing hordes? Are you going to be facing a single targets? Um, do you want magic damage? Because Ranger isn't going to isn't going to help you there. If you want pure physical damage, you might want to go Barbarian instead, um, because with Rage and uh, and you know, if you go Frenzied Berserker, um, you can swing you can swing three times. Um, not that other classes can't put out a lot of damage, but. It, it, it really it really is just going to depend on what you're trying to go for. Uh, age of Tesla, something like 32. Yeah, that, that could be. Um, middle age tiers, column four. Uh, but if we're compressing this, so this is really end of life. Yeah, you know what? We'll say, uh, we'll say Tesla. Uh, we'll give it, uh, we'll say 30, uh, 28 to 34. Um, or I guess it would be... 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So 29 to 34, and let's roll a d6. All right. Middle age, 29. Hey, Mola Mola, welcome. It's good to see you again. <laughs> we have our grizzled uh, midlife crisis goblin here at the age of 29. Okay. All right, so we have some of our racial traits. Um, now, we, we haven't gone through all of it. We just needed to reference a couple things for our random number generation. Next up, let's determine our character's alignment. Alignment is how your character expresses him or herself. A lawful good character, for example, is going to be more selfless and methodical than a chaotic evil character who is going to be more impulsive and selfish. Does that mean that a lawful good character can't do bad things? Not at all. Does a lawful good character have to be shoehorned into being uh, some noble, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I have uh, I have Bushido or chivalry to guide me at all times? If they can be, they don't have to be. Can a chaotic evil character still donate money to a charity? You know, to give money to orphans? Heck yeah. That that doesn't necessarily violate your 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 um alignment. But your alignment is generally how you express your personality traits, how you say the things that you do. Um you may ver you may have smart, salient points in a philosophical debate. But if it leaves your mouth sounding like an internet argument, then you know, if it just turns into a bunch of, you know, yo mama and no you and all of this other stuff. Uh, again, you have these ideas and you may have research and foundation for them. But if that's how you express yourself, that is how people are going to see you and interact with you. Oh, it's just it's just the Internet troll. You know, meanwhile, you you actually want to make valid points, but you're unable to express yourself in another way, at, the, at least at the moment. Tesla, yes, a chaotic evil character can certainly donate to charity. See, danger, danger, politics. <laughs> hey, it might be the secret owner of the orphanage, um, so that while he is publicly doing something good, he's just giving the money back to himself. Yeah. And, and that's why I want to make sure that, you know, we have these talks of alignment when we make characters. Don't shoehorn yourself in. You know, if you're a chaotic, if, if you're a chaotic neutral character, or even a chaotic good character. 
it doesn't mean you have to be chaotic stupid. It doesn't mean you have to go, ha ha, you know, glitter and squirrels and I'm holding a spork. Oh, I'm the penguin of doom. It doesn't have to be like that. You don't have to force yourself to be crazy, wacky, zany and not functional in society. It means that you carry an impulsive spirit and that can manifest in a lot of ways. Maybe you never order the same thing at a restaurant. Or, you know, you wait to go through the full menu. Anyway, let's roll our percentiles and figure out where he stands. Ni oh, 96, 12. We have a lawful evil goblin. So methodical and selfish are his tendencies. He tends to think things out. There is a structure, but the structure is going to be more self-serving. Or he's going to place his importance over that of others. Transform him from Mr. Chips into Scarface. Well, you know what? We might have already started on that journey, Tesla. Now, with that, uh, this opens up the option that if we roll Cleric, that uh, we can perhaps give him a Death Cleric. Or perhaps war. I, he could still be an order cleric. In fact, we'd probably go for an order cleric. Um, because that's thematic to the book. And I want to make sure that at least our final character is going to either be a circle of spores druid or an order cleric. Uh, that way we're at least... If we're going to shoehorn something and, and take away some randomness, I still want it to be appropriate to the theme that we're trying to present. Um... Why why roll for level first? And um and I mean we're gonna roll for level before we decide the class, but I mean just Well, all domains start at, at level one. So let's roll a percentile and find out at which level we're generating this character. Again, if you're building a character for a campaign, everyone's going to start, I would imagine, at the same level. We're doing this as an exercise in build in character building and in following the notes and, and going from there. When we make the campaign on Saturday, we're going to adjust the level of all of our characters to be the same. So this is merely an exercise in character building. At 43, we're going to generate a level 11 character of some kind. That is going to mean that we would get a stat bump at 4 and 8. Oh, and we're so close to 12, but not quite there yet. So we're going to get two ability score improvements or stat bumps. If we're a fighter, we technically get more. Anyway, you may, if your DM allows, take a feat instead of a uh, stat bump. I'm going to roll to see if any of our normal stat bumps are going to be replaced by feats. At rolling a five, nope. All us. It's all on us. Okay. Now let's find out our background. In the player's handbook, there are 13 different backgrounds available. As we are going to be exploring Ravnica, the guilds of Ravnica are very important. And so I will be rolling randomly from the 10 different guilds that exist to determine which guild this uh, to which guild this character belongs. So here's our D10. Here's our 10 guilds. Hey, Fiserys, welcome. It's great to see you here. Uh, guten Morgen to you. Let's see. Is, is that... Uh... Kitausen? Kitausen? It, it correct my pronunciation if that if I'm incorrect. But anyway, thank you very much for that follow. Let's roll our D10. Four. The Golgari Swarm. Oh no. Something is uh, we have another Golgari. Interesting.
He was good. Well, uh, Donke. Uh, I ate, it's been a long time since I have taken a German class, uh, but there are some basic things that I remember and probably uh, mispronounce. I think I can still count to 20. <laughs> now, the 12 different classes exist on Ravnica. A cleric has an option to take um, a special subclass to Ravnica, and a druid has an option to take a special subclass of druid. I'm going to roll a d12, which is going to be this big old fancy golden button right up here. Um, hey, Vasil, welcome. Uh, I popped open your box at the beginning of the stream. Um, and let's find out which class we're rolling. Two, a bard. Bards can be from the College of Lore or the College of Valor if we're sticking to the core rulebook. Others exist um, in other supplements. But in order to keep things uh, presentable and simple, I'm going to be referencing the player's handbook here. Because, I mean, the College of Whispers might work very well for Golgari, who, you know, slink through sewers and such. But we're going to go for Lore or Valor. I'm going to reroll the D12. And uh, let's find out, odds or evens, which college, uh, to which college this character will belong. Odds, College of Lore. A lawful evil male goblin College of Lore bard. Yep, if you don't want me to tell you, then you can watch the VOD. I did it at the very beginning of this session. So you'll be able to go back and watch it easily, Vasil. And we already did our height and weight and our age. So we do not need to generate any more random numbers. We can minimize this. And now we can focus on our character that we're going to be building out of the player's handbook and out of our Ravnica supplement here. All right. I like to begin first with the background of the character. And the reason why I like doing this is because it's going to describe who your character is. What was his first job? What are his hobbies? Um, what, what does he do besides being an adventurer or a bard in some way? So let's go over to Golgari. Boros Legion. There's a lot here. All right, here we go. The Golgari Swarm. There's a lot of fluff here. I'm not skipping over it because it's boring or uninteresting. It very much is interesting and engaging. For purposes of building our character, our, we can reference it, but I don't want to spend time reading everything and then fitting a character to a guild when instead we're making a unique character that exists for his own reasons. Just as each of you are unique. You know, you're not just a man. You're not just a woman. You're not just an artist. You're not just... um a factory worker. You're not just a blonde. You're not just a, a Toyota owner. You know, you're, there's much more to each of you besides, besides that. I mean, there are people who are probably going to tend to buy Toyotas. There are going to be people who are tend to be drawn towards art. There are people uh, who are born with uh, epicanthic folds or higher or lower melanin counts, but you are you. And I want this character to not just be a goblin, to not just be a bard, to not just be in the Golgari Swarm. Our character is unique for his own reasons, and we are going to uh, we're going to explore that and give this character a, a spirit, so that it's not just numbers on paper. Uh, oh, a lore bard in the sewers. Maybe he knows of a powerful item in the sewers, so he joined them to search for that item. Possibly, he's dead. Oh, he's gonna have so many skills. I'm not just a bard, I'm a wizard. 
<laughs> You're a wizard, Maddie. All right. So our background is... Orcs make beautiful lovers. It's great to see you here. Welcome. Being a Golgari agent, we are going to get skill proficiencies in nature and in survival. Uh, right? You know, we live in the undercity. We live in the sewers. Uh, we cultivate food, even though, you know, it's recycled from, uh, from you know, sewage and dead bodies. Um, well, hopefully not the dead bodies, but... If you don't know, you can talk to your local uh, wastewater treatment plant and you will find that what many of them do is when they remove the solid waste from the water that they're treating, uh, many of them will spread it out onto like a large concrete slab and it'll dry out and form kind of like a muck. It, and it's filled with uh, nutrients, we'll say, um, because it is manure of the human variety. And that manure is sold to farms in order to fertilize fields as a way to recycle. So the Golgari do grow a lot of food you know, and so that they are, they are very knowledgeable about this. They can scavenge for water and food. Uh, that, that's part of survival and knowledge of nature. These things are poisonous. These things are not. Um, it, it would make sense that someone of this guild and, you know, has this lifestyle would be proficient in these things. Live in the sewers, knows karate. Are you a ninja turtle? Um, we are a bardic goblin. Um, so uh, middle-aged, uh, middle-aged goblin, bardic, uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles. Uh, so I guess we're not mutants. So I guess um, middle-aged Golgari goblin bar lore bards. Middle-aged go yeah. Middle-aged Golgari goblin lore bards. It fill in the rest of the song from there. <clears throat> um, all right, tool proficiencies. A poisoner's kit. Don't confuse that with a poissonneur's kit, because then that's just fishing. <laughs> now, the more you want to play a game in that setting, I think it, it would make for a very solid setting, Vasil. And I know that Pete and Jeremy, or especially Jeremy... Uh, had qualms with it, and I totally understand them. I think that, I think that, a lot of this can be, uh, sort of, jimmied into a homebrew, in some way as well. So if you don't want to play just in Ravnica, you can take elements of it. But all of the all of the elements are meant to be played together in Ravnica. It's just like Eberron. Eberron might seem broken to your average, whatever that means, right? To your average, you know. Western European D&D uh, &D setting. And that's that's totally understandable because in Eberron, there's a different culture. There, The magic availability is different than in Faerun, which is generic Western European, you know, a setting. Um, and so for Ravnica, all the stuff here is balanced for Ravnica and is wholesome for Ravnica. You can take elements from Ravnica and put them into a homebrew. Make sure that you talk to your DM, is all. Are we Splinter? Um, I think we'd be more like the Mutant Turtle. <laughs> uh, let's see. Choose uh, one of Elvish, Giant, or Crawl. And I forget who speaks Crawl. It escapes me. Uh, Elvish, Giant, or Crawl. Our equipment, we are going to uh, have a Golgari signet or insignia. That way we can prove that we're a part of the Golgari swarm. Uh, we are going to get a poisoner's kit. We are going to get a pet beetle or spider. Uh, let's give him a pet spider. A set of common clothes. And a belt pouch containing 10 gapuz, GPs or gold pieces. Or xenos, as they're, they're called in Ravnica. All right, our feature is Undercity Paths. 
You know hidden underground pathways that you can use to bypass crowds, obstacles, and observation as you move through the city. When you aren't in combat, you and companions you lead can travel between any two locations in the city twice as fast as your speed would normally allow. The paths of the Undercity are haunted by dangers that rarely brave the light of the surface world, so your journey isn't guaranteed to be safe. Now, in the setting, as you can see by being in the Golgari Swarm, if you can cast spells, these spells are available to you in addition to your spell list. They, they aren't going to act like domain spells where you get them guaranteed for free on top of what you can cast based off of other modifiers. It's just that if you have a slot available to learn a spell, you can take this spell in that slot. Think of it like... Um, um, why is it escaping? Oh, Warlocks. When Warlocks choose a patron, your patron can enhance your spell list. They don't grant you more spells, but they grant you a slightly wider variety of spells that you could learn otherwise from the generic Warlock spell list. Being a Golgari, you're exposed to this magic here that maybe your class wouldn't normally have. <clears throat> Uh, DJ, yeah. In fact, I, I see these two working together rather well. And by the way, I, I want to bring this up. Um, bards can make... Uh, bards can be necromancers. If you're looking at, uh, you know, if you're looking at ways to... Uh, you know, if you're counting a necromancer as someone who raises the dead and such, casts necromantic magic, you can have a bard be a necromancer. Uh, clerics... Wizards, bards, and paladins are uh, are effectively necromancer classes in 5th edition. <laughs> Pardon me for blowing my nose on stream here. Okay. Personality traits. We're going to roll 2. 2d8. 8 and 7. Our personality traits are going to just do that. They're, they're going to help define who this character is. And then we're going to roll 3d6 for an ideal, a bond, and a flaw. 614. All right, now let's find out what does this mean. Let's dig into the character of our character. Number eight. Like a wild animal... I lash out viciously when I'm provoked. And I'm easily provoked. And number seven, I put my knowledge of anatomy to use by, uh, to use by narrating the injuries my enemies suffer in grisly detail. So, uh, he's dueling with a rapier and he, uh, maybe he lands a critical hit and, you know, he, you could describe, oh, well, I've punctured your stomach. You won't immediately die from that, but it might take two or three days. It'll be quite excruciating. In fact, the bile in your bowels and the bacteria will spill out and you'll probably not die of blood loss, but from, uh, from uh, poisoning yourself. On your own juices. <laughs> Are we thriller now, says Rytel. <laughs> Bard sings spooky skeletons to animate skeletons? Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's some supporting spells they can take as well. Uh, especially if you, uh, with that high charisma, if you do raise dead... You can give them temporary hit points with that nice charisma feat. Derek says, I drown I drown people on dry land. Some arteries are so close to the windpipe. Oh. And you know what? He's a bard. He's a lore bard, right? Bring some flourish to this. Bring some flourish and flair. Have some rather, um, you know, uh, have some rather uh, 
interestingly detailed comments pre-generated if you're playing this character. Okay, his ideal is number six. Hey, one crit, welcome. And, well, I don't know if you're caught in ad purgatory, but uh, um, thank you very much for that. Live and let live. Meddling in the affairs of other guilds is a great way to get squashed like a bug. Hey, he's a goblin. He might know what it's like to be underfoot. He may he may have personal ambition, but he's not looking to be dumb about it. His bond is number one. I cherish the finger of a family member who was petrified by a Medusa. Gorgons or Medusa are uh, in the Golgari Swarm. You're making me start to like bards. Well, you know, so <laughs> think about it this way. He has a rapier. And uh, so instead of singing, uh, instead of um, uh, Yakko singing the country song in Animaniacs, he keeps tagging you uh, with his rapier and he's going through an anatomy lesson <laughs> as he's quite literally pointing out all the parts of your body. And his flaw, because we are all flawed creatures, my friends, is number four. I don't bother to couch my opinions in flattering words. If he doesn't like you, he's just going to tell you. I don't like your face. I don't trust you. Especially because of his lawful evil alignment. He, he is, he's going to be more blunt. If he likes or doesn't like something, he's going to say it. Um, you know, he doesn't have to, you know, he doesn't have to try and save face. He is here and he's here to do a job. He's here to present himself. He may know a lot of language. He may have a, a big vocabulary, but he doesn't have to simper. He doesn't have to, you know, oh, milady, you're, you're ravishing. You know, you, you have the, the glow of the morning sun about you. Um, he, he, that's, that's, so his bluntness can get him into trouble. That's why it's a flaw. Cause look, some people don't have that brain to mouth filter. And so, uh, you know, he's going to look over at, um, you know, probably some Orzov banker, you know, it, we'll kind of do like a stereotypical fat cat style, you know, like an Orzov banker is coming out of the, uh, is coming out of his job, you know, look over and, uh, in, in for some reason, cause look, if he's provoked, you know, so maybe this person walks past like, out of my way, goblin. What are you doing out of the gutter? What are you doing out of a restaurant? Look at you. Um, I mean, he's going to give back. This is a no, a no guff goblin. Also, I came in and I don't like your face as soon as I said hi and it was really confused. Hey, one crit, welcome and thank you for the host. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your game went well, by the way. Uh, you're playing Star Wars tonight, if I'm correct. Uh, Orcs Make Beautiful Lovers asks, I do have a question about improv weapons eventually, but I don't want to derail. Uh, Orcs, throw it out there. Let, we, we can talk about improv weapons, uh, because it, maybe I can offer something, but also chat over here might be able to help answer a question too. Don't feel like you're going to throw us off. If something is coming up, let us know. This is an open table discussion. Vazel says a gobbo bard can slay like a queen. <laughs> All right, now, Golgari Contacts. This is another unique feature to the guild affiliations. Um, we are going to be making... We're going to roll twice. Once is an ally. Uh, the, the second one is a rival. Not, and then we're going to roll once for a non-Golgari contact. All right, 2d8, uh, 8 and 6. So our ally is 8, our rival is 6. 
And our non-Golgari contact is going to be on a D10. Also a 6. All right. So let's discover where he's at in relationship to others inside the Golgari Swarm. His ally, number 8. I know a find broker who can locate just about anything for the right price. If you're a DM, do you see... I mean, not only does a normal background, like Urchin or Sailor out of the player's handbook, that can provide you a ton of content to consider for your campaign. But this is going the extra mile. By your PCs going through this process, you are getting NPCs that you can use in wonderful ways. In fact, the same ally and or rival can even um, be in contact with several of the party members at once. And wouldn't that be interesting? As a party member, this is extra content for you. You have people you can go to right out the gate so you aren't implied to be alone. Now look, if you take Acolyte out of the player's handbook, presumably you're going to know someone in a temple, right? I mean, I guess you could be excluded, like you're always sort of a, a wallflower uh, altar, uh, like an altar boy or something like that. You, you came, you did your duties. You're, it's not that you're unfaithful, you just never did the extra social stuff. Um, but this is making sure that you are getting woven into the guild fabric of Ravnica. Let's take a look at Arrival. Arrival is number six. An elf lich is determined to see me become a lich someday, too. Ooh, and you know what? With Alla, who is our Golgari uh, character we randomly rolled yesterday, that was the same rival. And so uh, Alla and our goblin, our to-be-named goblin here, might have, uh, they share a rival. And what if the rival is, is actually kind of pitting the two against each other to see who would be a better candidate to receive this gift of unlife? Are we... Are, are we hitting all cylinders here? Are, are we coming up with some cool thoughts and ideas? Orc says, so I went to an open air market and I bought some cayenne pepper and I put it into a sock to make a sap. How do I roll blinding? Um, is, is this a Pathfinder? Or a third edition? Or are, are, we, are we still talking fifth? Because saps are, a, um, they carry mechanics in those editions. Otherwise, um, it's in 5th ed. Uh, otherwise, I mean, so it'll deal, um, it, it, it'll deal damage, I guess, according, uh, according to that. Uh, it, how do I roll for blinding? So it, it's, you're using it as like a, a, a bludgeoning pepper spray. Um, yeah, I mean, your DM would probably just, uh, Stat it uh, similar uh, to, I don't know, maybe the blindness deafness and just put a static like cayenne pepper is uh, it could be a con save uh, DC 11 or 12, uh, depending on how your your DM wants to scale it. You know, meanwhile, if you somehow make like a, a jalapeno or a, a habanero or like a ghost pepper dust. Uh, then it might have the same effects of creating, you know, watery tears, but the, the difficulty class can, can get higher. I, I'm an orc fighter named Knock Knock. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you want the cayenne pepper to be distributed and it's in a sap, it would probably just be like one point of bludgeoning damage uh, for, from the weapon. I mean, because look, it's almost like, uh, uh, I mean, if you put a bar of soap in a sock and you use it to, to have a, well, what's, what's known as a blanket party. Um, I mean, the soap's dealing the damage here, but the, you know, the sock is the delivery. So if it's just filled with cayenne pepper, you're probably swinging not so much for the damage, uh, but for the effect. I had a player that, oh, who threw sand. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think what would be appropriate is get a get a con save DC on, and uh, if you hit, then 
you know, it, maybe if they pass the cayenne pepper, then they can't be affected by it uh, for, I don't know, X amount of time. Um, or, I don't know, if you're sacrificing damage, then maybe you can just keep swinging and continue the effect. That that could be fair. Um, I mean, especially if you're the muscle in the group. Uh, so the group isn't really, isn't getting uh, as much physical, uh, you know, damage per round out of you. Because you're sitting there just bapping them with a sock full of paprika. Or cayenne, I'm sorry. All right, our non-Golgari contact is number six. Whoops. And is it scientist resents that I sold a scrapped invention I found in the sewer? This does sound more like another rival. Um, you can have it be an ally. Uh, in fact, uh, maybe the person's an ally because they said, you know what? Uh, I do resent you, but uh, you have skill. Uh, and you might be able to help me find something else. So let's team up and work together. Uh, I don't like that I lost my invention. Maybe it'll come back to me someday, but we can work together. Or this is this is good for another rival if you want one. Right, tell, yeah, apparently the bag of sand you get in that one equipment pack can do a thing. Derek says, suddenly I want to see if my convict works in 5e. Uh, Derek says, I don't know, is it? <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. Here we go. You know, for, for intents and purposes, we have a character. Our character has character. And look, there's, there's not a single stat. But already, you know, we've considered generally what a bard is and does. We've considered our background, and we've considered the fact that we're a goblin with a, a, a penchant for expressing himself bluntly. I mean, now we get to add some extra numbers that will have some fun math and random number generation uh, to put through some, some basic computations. But we have a character, right? Okay, let's do Goblin next and figure out what being a Goblin is going to bestow this character specifically. Minotaur, here we are. Goblin. Your, dex score, your dexterity score increases by two, so I'm going to float that number here. And our constitution increases by one. We already have our alignment, our size, our speed is 30 feet. Now, what's interesting, because we're a small creature, uh, normally that's 25 feet. In this case, though, I guess we're, we're quick little guys. And, uh, and so we can scamper at 30 and keep up. We do get 60 feet of dark vision. We get an ability called Fury... Of the small. When you damage a creature with an attack or a spell and the creature's size is larger than yours, you can cause the attack or spell to deal extra damage to the creature. The extra damage equals your level. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. Nimble Escape. You can take the disengage or hide action as a bonus action on each of your turns. That's really good. That's really good. And for our languages, we can speak, read, and write common and goblin. In Ravnica, goblin is a simplistic language with a limited vocabulary, uh, vocabulary and fluid rules of grammar, unsuited for any sophisticated conversation. Hey, Plunder Loot, welcome. Uh, orcs, were we able to help help you come to like a, a proposal to give to your DM? Okay, now. 
Let's go over class. Open up your player's handbooks. Come on now. I hope you came prepared for class, everyone. We're going to go to Bard. And let's make our Bard. We are level 11, and that's going to give us then 11 D8 hit die. What that does is uh, if we're resting, it allows us to catch our breath, right? It's sort of self-healing without having to use magic or or medicinal kits. Um, you know, we're resting, we're kind of stretching our muscles, we're rubbing out uh, cramps in our legs or whatever. Uh, you know, we're, we're taking a meal and we're feeling a little bit better. Uh, so hit die represent sort of your, your hardiness. We're level 11 and we're a D8 hit die class. Put them together, what do you get? Bippity boppity boo. 11 D8. We have uh, proficiency in light armor. And we have proficiency in a couple different types of weapons. All simple weapons. Hand crossbows. Uh, long and short swords. And rapiers. We will also become proficient in three instruments of our choice. Now, does it just have to be an instrument? Not necessarily. Um, if you talk to your DM and you go to the entertainer background, there are some different uh, techniques you can learn, like juggling or fire breathing, tumbling, storytelling. Um, or if you want to just be good at playing three different types of uh, instruments, you can put that down as well. But again, communicate with your DM to see if you can go outside the norm in some way. All right, our saving throw proficiencies are dexterity and charisma. So we're especially good at, uh, you know, tumbling out of the way of things or uh, charisma is used against things like being charmed. Right? It's sort of like your, your counter charm, which actually we'll get as a bard. Skills. We get to choose any three skills. How I like to do this, and you may do it differently. You know, if you're if you're all kind of handpicking your elements, you might you might talk to the rest of your party and say, oh, I guess no one has animal handling, so I'll take animal handling. What we do here, because I want to make an authentic character, I want to make someone that could exist on his own. Let's look at his personality. You know, what would he carry into becoming a bard? Well, number one, if he has knowledge of anatomy, I think he's going to get uh, medicine. Right? Derek says, tool proficiency, loot, harmonica, and the empty skulls of my vanquished foes. <laughs> and you know what? There are instruments of macabre origin. This is a lute that is made from a human skull and hair that uh, that has uh, like goat horns affixed to it, and the uh, and the stick holds the um, uh, antelope horn. Yep. Damaru, a 19th century skull, cloth, and wax. So this is a... And I'm sure you could find other such things. Because the Golgari are really good at recycling. Can I get one of those on Amazon? Uh, maybe not the real one that the museum has. Uh, but you might be able to come up with uh, with something fun. Uh, you can kind of make your own, right? With uh, With different parts. All right, medicine. Let's see, what else here? I don't bother to couch my opinions in flattering words. I cherish the finger of a family member who's petrified by Medusa. Uh, meddling in the affairs of the other guilds is a great way to get squashed like a bug. I uh, lash out viciously when I'm provoked and I'm easily provoked. I put my knowledge of anatomy to use. Oh, you know what? This sounds in intimidation, I think, would be a good one. All right, he doesn't speak kindly. It's not that he can't. He just doesn't. 
Uh, I know a fine broker who can locate about anything for the right price, and Elf Lich is determined to see me become a lich someday. And an is it scientist resents that I sold a scrapped invention I found in the sewer. Perception, perhaps? If we're good at finding things, maybe investigation? <laughs> um... Let's see. Undercity paths, finding your way around. Investigation or perception. Maybe we can go with perception because he, he would be on the lookout for provocation, right? If he provokes easily, he's probably keeping his ears open. So maybe it's not that he doesn't want to fight. Maybe he's looking for one, but he is, you know, he, he wants an instigation of some kind. So maybe in this case, perception would be the, the proper training. <laughs> yeah, those savage centipedes, though, Dark Wolf. On a positive note, says Plunder Loot, it's been less hectic, yet still just long days, hoping to change it soon. Well, and I hope when you go home, I mean, you have a nice collection of, um, of uh, relaxants uh, that await for you when you arrive at home, Plunder Loot. That you can sit back and you know what you work hard you know you earn your money and um and you spend it on something that you can really savor and enjoy and so i do hope you get that ability to do so and really uh and really enjoy the fruits of your labor sir all right so there's our three skills uh we're gonna get some starting equipment a rapier a long sword or any simple weapon now, this, this can help us determine, do we want to make a dex bard or a strength bard? You know, if we're going valor, we would we might want to tend to go towards a, a strength bard, right? Because you're, you're used to fighting on the front lines. Uh, you know, you sing glorious songs in the middle of combat, um, whereas a lore bard might be more of a back line. Now, some of the weapons we can use, like rapiers or, um, rapiers or a short sword... Um, you know, those are finesse weapons. And so you can use those with dex if you choose instead of strength. But I don't know. This little guy gets into scraps. I lash out viciously when I'm provoked. I'm easily provoked. Knowledge of anatomy by narrating the injuries. He does get around in the sewers. I think we're going to go dex on him. In that case, why don't we give him a rapier? A diplomat's pack or an entertainer's? Hey, Omit, welcome. Uh, is the PDF file free? No, so you can get the PDF... Um, you know, if, if you are on D&D Beyond or, like, there's other ways that you can acquire the PDF. Um, also, if you own the book, uh, you might be able to scan it in uh, for a, a quick reference. You know, kind of like what we're doing uh, with the, the, the Guild Masters. Um, you know, anything I show, I have a copy of as well. Uh, however, a lot of this information is available uh, through um, D&D. Actually, here. Let me show you. Okay. Now, if you find it elsewhere, which you might be able to do, uh, you might be able to find a, a PDF elsewhere. Um, and, and that would be up to your ingenuity and your searching skills. Uh, is it printable? I, I, a PDF should be printable, but I don't know if you'd want to print out 300... Uh, 300 some pages. Uh, I, I don't know off that. Uh, maybe. Um, so if you find something, you find something. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, you know, depending on your, on your resources. Uh, but I would urge you to, you know, support the official releases. Um, you know, speaking especially as a store owner. 
All right, a diplomat's pack or an entertainer's pack? You know what? I want to explore the differences of that again. That's in Chapter 5 Equipment. Adventuring gear. Here we go. Diplomat pack. A chest, two cases for maps and scrolls, a set of fine clothes, bottle of ink, ink pen, lamp, two flasks of oil, five sheets of paper, a vial of perfume, sealing wax, and soap. Or an entertainer's pack includes a backpack, bedroll, two costumes, five candles, five days of rations, a water skin, and a disguise kit. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Given he's a lore bard, so he does... He, I imagine he takes a lot of different notes. Live and let live... I cherish the finger. He'd probably want to keep that in a chest, not just hanging around. Uh, not just hanging around his um, his neck. I mean, he could, I suppose. Let's give him the diplomat's pack. Go back to bard. A lute or another musical instrument, and so I mean, we could just fill in instrument of some kind. Whatever we want to make him one of his proficiencies. Leather armor and a dagger. There we go. We are level 11, so we're really going to be paying attention to this stuff up here. We're going to know four cantrips. One, two, three, and four. Our spell slots are four, three, 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 two, and one. Oop, oh, that was one extra three there. Two, one, and these get deleted. There we go. What else are we looking at as we go through here? Spells known, we'll get to that, and our slots. Hey, it's, it's, it's official. We have a cat, everyone. We can cast rituals. Uh, there we go. We'll, we'll come to magic last. Uh, some of the magic requires us to have uh, certain stats, and, uh, and we'll, we'll come to that. All right, we are going to get jack-of-all-trades. That is going to give us uh, half proficiency rounded down to any ability check you make that doesn't already include your proficiency bonus. So, I mean, we're going to be really good at some stuff, and we're going to be, be uh, you know, like, I guess we'll say we're, be or we're uh, better at some things, and we're good at, mo at everything else. And you know what? We're also going to get expertise, which is going to make us best also. Uh, we are going to get Song of Rest which allows us to increase the amount of hit points that our party members are going to recover when they're spending hit dice. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, it goes to 1d10 at 13th. So we're at Song of Rest at uh, 1d8. We're going to get our Bard College, and we're going to fill it in Archetype. Don't worry about that just yet. I want to look at what we get for being a Bard, not just a College of Lore Bard. We're going to get Expertise. At third level, choose two of your skill proficiencies. Your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses either of the chosen proficiencies. And at tenth level, you can choose another two skills. So Expertise in four skills. And on this sheet, if you notice right here, you see these extra little circles here? If we have expertise in nature, boom, fill that in, and you know that you can add proficiency twice to it. Are disguise kits one use only? Um, not necessarily. It really is going to be up to you to talk about that with your DM. For instance, if you have a fake mustache, your mustache, unless for some reason you lost it while running away, might be reusable. However, the glue or the spirit gum that you use to affix it to your lip 
maybe your DM says you have um, 10 applications of it. So you can reuse your mustache, but every time you you use it, it consumes some of your uh, some of your glue. Uh, or, you know, your disguise kit may have perfumes or makeup in it. Um, so it's it's there. There are elements that are consumable and elements that presumably are not consumable. It omit the fifth, you're you're really gonna have to work that out with your DM. Hey Barbarian, welcome. Hello, Danger Unicorn. The cat scared you. Oh no. No, don't let him scare you. Oh, he's just a big old floof. Yeah, hi. What a face. What a face. <laughs> All right, so we'll choose four of our skills in which we can be uh, proficient. Um, I guess right now, because we haven't added our, our bardic lore just yet. Uh, Diadems, I still have two boxes left of the original brick, and then I have a sealed brick that's left of the new Ravnica minis. We'll get our ability score improvements in. We're also going to be receiving Font of Inspiration. Beginning when you reach 5th level, you regain all your expended uses of Bardic Inspiration when you finish a short or a long rest. And that's really good. Bardic Inspiration is... Uh, uh, Bardic Inspiration is really good. Actually, ha, huh, I forgot to put that down under uh, our class abilities. Bardic Inspiration is a huge one. Let's see, uh, the creature gains one Bardic Inspiration die, a d6 that you can add to various things. Um, and because we are level 11, it goes to a d10 at 10th level, but we're not quite at, at a d12 yet. So Bardic Inspiration is 1d10. And we're going to get a number of uses equal to our Charisma modifier, but we don't have it yet, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. Uh, in fact, if we come down here, um, well, eh, we'll fill it in. Don't worry. All right. At, oh, we get counter charm. At sixth level, you gain the ability to use musical notes or words of power to disrupt mind influencing effects. At level 10, we'll get magical secrets. By 10th level, you have plundered magical knowledge from a wide spectrum of disciplines. Choose two spells from any class, including this one. A spell you choose must be of a level you can cast, as shown on the bard table for a can or a cantrip. They count as bard spells, so if you choose a cleric spell, normally those are wisdom. You can use charisma because it's counting as a bard spell. Now, for College of Lore, because uh, we, we don't have superior inspiration at 20th level here. Um, College of Lore, we are going to get proficiency with three skills of our choice. Hey, Coffee Cat, welcome. <clears throat> Let's see, what else would he pick up then? If he is going through, an elf lich is determined to see me become a lich someday, and is it scientist resents that I sold a scrapped invention I found in the sewer. Maybe we have a diplomat's pack. It does have, what do we give him? Probably performance. Considering becoming a lich. That doesn't necessarily mean a wizard to the Golgari. However, that could mean that we would need to know a great deal about history. Maybe we'll give him history. And if we want to know if people perhaps uh, are, you know, are going to pick a fight, then maybe insight would be a good one as well.
Dark Wolf says, by the way, I finished Card Capture this morning. I had to go out of town, though, so maybe I can drop it on the store. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let me know at your earliest convenience, Dark Wolf. Uh, we'll we'll talk and uh, and we'll go from there. Now let's. What would he be? What he be good at? I think medicine. And right for the anatomy. And perception, especially if he's uh, if he's out looking, listening. If he wants to find points to prod you. Uh, that could work. And then he can get the other two in his expanded, uh, if, if he so wishes. And that was, uh, history, performance, and, uh, insight. Let's go with history. Whoops. And you know what? It was an original. Let's go back to intimidation. I think he could be very intimidating. Your cat's sitting until Tuesday. Oh, okay, Dark Wolf. Preemptive warning, I may be late to the game, but I should still make it. All right, well, thank you for the, the preemption. All right, cutting words. You know how to use your wit to distract, confuse, or otherwise sap the confidence and competence of others. Um, you can use your reaction to spend one of your bardic inspirations. Uh, so down here now. Oh, all right, bye. It's a cat butt. We got a cat butt, everyone. Welcome to Maddie Morgs. Bardic Inspiration or Cutting Words. We'll put that down here for sort of miscellaneous uses of other things. Uh, and we're going to get additional magic secrets. You learn two spells of your choice from any class. And we don't quite have enough levels to get Peerless Skill just yet. Nice. That's going to be four extra spells from anything else we want. I have not yet, Diadems, but don't worry. We're coming up to a break when we finish this character. Yes, yeah, danger. Uh, cat butt is... Uh, cat butt's a thing that happens. <laughs> okay, so we have... Uh, we have the elements of our character. We have our background, our race, and our class. And now that we have our chassis, it is time to... It's time to drop in some stats, right? Now let's start filling in the math and seeing just not that he's good at something, but how good is he? Is this an NPC or someone going to play this character? Uh, as we make characters on the stream, Amit, we're making them as if someone is going to pilot them. Because at the end of the week, we then make a campaign that we would run for these characters. Technically, they're NPCs because, you know, people don't get behind, they don't get the character sheets and pilot them. But we're making them as characters that are going to be taking part in some kind of a story that we're going to develop on Saturday. Now, at the end of the week, I upload content, and um, if you like a character, you can download the PDF of the character and play him or her yourself, if you so choose. But the characters we make are exercises in a, in a workshop environment to make characters, to consider different things and maybe find inspiration for yourself. So no one's necessarily going to pilot this, this character specifically unless you chose to do so. But if you hop over to our Discord and you come over to... Uh, da -da -da. Where'd you go? Um... Past content right here. You see with the three and a half floppy disk, it says past content. All of the stuff that we make in our workshop shows up here. So you can not only watch the video on how it happened, you can download uh, you can download the documents and the PDFs that we generate for free. You don't need to be a subscriber. Um, you can hop on here and get this content or watch the content. And you maybe you can get some use out of it. Okay. We're going to we're going to use the standard array for our scores. Let's drop a 15 in his charisma. 
indefinitely. Let's drop a fourteen in his oop, a fourteen in his decks. He's gonna be a nimble little thing. Um He is very observant. Maybe we go thirteen. Twelve, ten, eight. Now, if you have any other recommendations, you can throw them out there. This is what he's sounding like to me. As we've built our character, you know, I'm considering his background, his personality. Therefore, what are the things that he's gone through as a person? If we do this, that's going to give us a 16 dex and an 11 con. And we get an ASI, or an Ability Score Improvement, at 4 and 8. That means we have 4 points that we can drop into our uh, into our Ability Scores here. So let's go Charisma, Con, Wisdom, and let's bring our Strength up to 9. Look. Derek shows that having a nine strength can make a big difference. And I mean, I say a tongue in cheek to our Tuesday game, but if you're ever floating an odd number uh, for a, an ability score improvement, drop it into your strength. Um, you get a mechanical benefit from your strength score, not just a modifier for it. So we're still going to have a minus one modifier, but, um, our score is going to confer a benefit to us. And actually, I should have put those here. 9, 16, 12, 12, 14, and 16. It's going to give us a 3, a 2, a 2, a 1. Whoops. 3, 4, 3, and minus 1. Our proficiency at level 11 is a plus 4. So, uh, our strength saving throw is going to be negative 1. Our athletics, because of Jack of All Trades, isn't going to be negative 1. It's going to be 3. Um, not 3, 1. It'll be 1. You get, with Jack of All Trades, for skills in which you are not proficient, you get half your proficiency bonus rounded down to them. So, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Our dex saving throw is going to be 7. Acrobatics is going to be 5. Sleight of hand, 5. And stealth is going to be 5, right? 3 plus half our proficiency. Constitution's a 1. Intelligence, 2. Arcana is going to be 4. As will investigation and religion. Nature is going to be 2 plus 4 is 6. However, history, because we're an expert in it, we get proficiency twice. So 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 2, we have a 10 in history. Wisdom, 2, for our saving throw, because saving throws are not covered by Jack of All Trades. Animal handling is, and that's going to be a 4. Insight is going to be a 6, and Survival will be a 6. However, our Medicine and our Perception, two skills in which we have expertise, are going to be 10 and 10. Charisma is going to be 7. Deception is going to be 5. Persuasion is 5. Intimidation is going to be 11, and Performance is going to be 7. Now, Jack of All Trades applies to one other thing. Initiative. Initiative is a dexterity check. Jack of All Trades affects checks. Therefore, we would normally get a 3 to our initiative, but because of Jack of All Trades, it's going to be a 5. Our passive perception is going to be a 20. 10 plus your 
perception modifier. And that's your natural awareness of what's going on around you without really having to super pay attention in a focused manner. Hashtag too strong, says Derek. Jade the Swall, that's right. Uh, this is why I love bards. They're useful at just about everything skill-based. They are formidable, DMs. And you know what? If we took the feat Observant, that would go up to a 25. Haikuno, is it normal to hate magic users as a new DM? Players just take forever to create their mages or wizards. Uh, I understand that frustration, Haikuno, and welcome. Uh, and I, I appreciate you opening up and asking a question about that. What I would... Um, uh, what I would do, Haikuno is talk to your players and say that uh, I'm going to go through initiative and maybe you keep a little egg timer, like a minute timer or like a little two minute sand timer. And you create the expectation with your players that uh, they each have a minute or two minutes to decide what, what action they're taking because combats are taking too long or you want to make sure the pressure and therefore, you know, you're in combat. You should be making these decisions, uh, you know, more quickly. Um, uh, so instill that in your, in your group. And also, I mean, if you have a player that is, uh, like a wizard and they want to cast a bunch of buffs and they're having a bunch of table talk in the middle of combat, you know, from player to player saying, Oh, all right. So this is what we'll do. Like you go here, you go here. Um, and then I'll move here and we're, there's ain't nobody got time for that. Zombies coming up the hill right now. Press a. Turn the pressure up. Don't allow table talking and put a, put a timer. Or if you if you don't allow it, then say you have to role play it. You have to shout or you have to shout your commands, in which case your enemies might hear, unless they have telepathy. In that case, hey, roll with it. Um so you know you could instill a timer and then you know be be cool about it. Just instill that expectation that I want my I want my turns to happen in a timely fashion. I'm gonna give you a two minute timer or I'm gonna set a little one minute egg timer or something. GGC, uh, do you have a special slot on the character sheet that represents the guild besides the background? Uh, in in Ravnica, uh, GGC, the backgrounds are your guild affiliation. And so Golgari Agent is a background in this book. Yeah, you're very welcome, Haikuno. And it's important. I understand how frustrating it can be. Be calm. You know, stay above it. And, and introduce this as a new measure that, you know, that you're, you want to you wanna encourage positivity. Look, I believe in you guys, and I think this is going to be a good way because, you know what, I'm going to subject myself to this as well. It's not just something I'm doing for you. But if you're going to strategize at the table, the monsters are going to overhear that. And also, I expect each of you to take your turns. You all are here. You're watching combat. I presume you're not on your phones. I presume that, you know, you're not, you're not playing a game on a mobile device or something while we're going through combat. I am presuming that you're paying attention to combat and it should be easy for you to wait, you know, to see what's happening on the field and adjust for that as you're waiting for however many other people are taking their turns. If there are five players, that means that, uh, you know, everyone, if, if they went to the two minute time, they would have eight minutes to make a decision based on what's happening on the field. Also, if you're a player character, all you have to know is your character. The DM has to run everything else in the world. So there's not an unreasonable expectation as a DM that your, your player should be aware <clears throat> pardon me, of your spells and options in combat or in roleplay that are available. Because that's all the player really has to know about. And the player should be paying attention to what is happening at the tabletop. So it's not unreasonable to politely ask people to take their noses out of their phones, to use a timer, or... Uh, something along those lines. Yep. 
Yeah, well, that happens, Derek. That's true. Hey, Xcat, welcome. All right. Now that we have this, let's continue filling in. Uh, armor class. Leather armor starts you at AC 11 plus dex. So we have an AC of 14. Hit points. At level 1, you get your full hit die worth of hit points. We are a D8 class. At level 1, we get 8 hit points. For our remaining 10 levels, because we're level 11, your DM may do this differently. I encourage half plus 1. So in this case, it'd be 5, right? Half of, uh, half of 8 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So... For our remaining 10 levels, we get 5 hit points. And then... And then... For every level, 1 through whatever you currently are, that's 11, you get bonus hit points equal to your con modifier. And here you go. This is how we calculate our max hit points. Nice and easy. So we have 11. We have 50. We have 58. We have 69 hit points for our bard at level 11. And by the way, if you all have a name, he's no longer a set of stats. We have a developed character. So what would you like to name our male goblin uh, lore bard, who's a Golgari agent and, and has a very unique personality to him as well? As we continue going down, uh, any of our dex-based attacks, well, we're proficient, so it's going to be a plus seven with a rapier and a dagger, because those are both um, those are both uh, finesse weapons. So you can choose to use dexterity instead of strength if you wish. Rapier da, 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 plus three, daggers one d four plus three. They're both piercing. All right. Next up, now that we have our Charisma modifier, we have three uses of Bardic Inspiration or Cutting Words. So we're going to drop that here. And, um, and oh, by the way, if any of you uh, like these alternative character sheets, you can find them here. And if you want official character sheets, you can find them here. New Monica, you think his name is Jeremy. Haikuno, do you like the name, uh, uh, it, so, it, Dao, if we're, if we well, hang on, that, that would be an E-A-U-X for more of the French. So, uh, Dex, is that like Jizdex? Sir Dwendal Glistenstorm? Jizdex? Jizdex, uh, Glistenstorm? And maybe that's hard to pronounce, so people just call him uh, Jeremy, <laughs> right? For or uh, Jay, uh, you know, because look, not everyone can speak the the goblin tongue. Okay. A glisten storm. What would be the history to that name? What brought about the family the family name of glisten storm? Yeah, or they call him Stormy. J Storm, or just Stormy. Jer actually, maybe Jeremy is somehow a combination of of Jizdex glisten storm. And that's just how it works out. So Jeremy's actually uh, <laughs> Jeremy's actually his nickname. All right, for our spell attacks, we attack off of charisma. So that's three. We're proficient, I hope, at casting spells. So we have a plus seven to that. To determine how hard it is to resist the effects of our spells, simply add the number eight to your attack modifier. And there we go.
We come down here. We are a bard who attacks off of Cha. We have a 15 save DC and a plus 7 to hit. We have bardic inspiration slash cutting words, and we can use three of those. And we have slots four, three, 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 two, and one at this level. Cantrips, we have one, a two, a three, a three. Now, to determine our spells known, as you can see here, look, at first level, we know four spells. Right? Bada boom. Is what we're looking at here. This is my suggestion. You may do it differently. I like indicating, like, when did you get access to this spell? Or where? There's our four spells known at level one. As you can see, we then go to five spells known at level two, but we don't have access to a higher spell slot. Therefore, this comes down and this is our level two. Now, at level three, we go from five to six, so we can learn one more spell. However, we can learn, if we choose, a second level spell. Now, nothing would keep you from dropping level three in here if you really want to, you know, catch them all and, and get all your level ones. If we were to ride out the pattern here, here's uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, and 11. Actually, th there's a bump here with bards. Bear with me on this. Uh, because we go, uh, let's see, then we 11, 12, 12 to 14 at 10th level. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're going to get two level 10s. And then we're going to get one level 11 that we can drop in somewhere. So I'm going to put, I'm, I'm just going to put a 10 and a 10 here and I'm going to put an 11 here just so we, all right. Because you can take lower level slots and the reason why we have two 10s is because those two spells, you see where we jump from 12 to 14? Uh, that is where we are getting our uh, our extra... Hang on. I want to make sure I'm I'm not confusing something here because the way they, they have this written out. I'm so I'm sorry if I'm uh, if I'm if I mess this up here. You get your um, magical secrets. Yeah, by tenth by tenth level. Yep. So that's our that's our two jump at ten. We're also going to get a jump at 6th level because of our College of Lore. Now, the 10s don't have to stack all the way at the end. You can take another cantrip. You can take... Uh, it, it could be a druid cantrip. Uh, you can take a level 2 spell if you want. So, this is why labeling this stuff can come in handy. So, we can go, I don't know, level, level 3 and a cantrip. There we go. So, we're going to remove this. And we're going to just have this be a level um, a level 11 dropped in. Though bear in mind, for College of Lore for the Magical Secrets, um, must be of a level you can cast as shown on the bard table, or a cantrip. Um, so that would mean that uh, at by 6th level, that's a level 3 magic. Uh, so here we can go um, like ADM, if you choose instead. Maybe we take that, and maybe the, uh, ADM is our cantrip, and that'll free up another level ten we can drop somewhere. Maybe we want, uh, maybe we want our. Um... Actually, we'll just call it magical secrets instead. There we go. And you can retrain spells in between levels uh, too. Uh, let me catch up and chat here. Uh... They call him uh, Jeremy, pronounced Jeremy. I don't know if you're creating a character for a specific world or something. Uh, we're, we're creating it in the Ravnica campaign setting that has been released. 
Maybe the Glisten Storm family was a really, really big one which lived in some kind of mountain that has been constantly hit by storms. I don't know much about goblins. Hey, we're creating lore as we go along. Go with what flows, Haikuno. Can you can you offer some justification to the family name Glisten Storm? And maybe he's a bard because he sung to whichever deity he believed and to stop attacking them with the storms. I just joined the stream, so I don't really know if you've set some sort of story. This is open-ended. This is mutual storytelling at our table. And you are welcome to it, Haikuno. Uh, how long have how, how long have I been playing D and I've been playing D and D since uh, third edition came out in two thousand, and I've been running D and D as a DM for twelve or thirteen years now. Okay, so for changing here. Additionally. When you gain a level in this class, you can choose one of the bard spells you know and replace it with another spell from the bard spell list, which also must be of a level for which you have spell slots. Now, what that can mean, though, is if you're no longer using that level one ability and you get the chance to retrain it into a level three, you can do so. As long as you have the ability to cast level three uh, magic. So, I mean, you could just delete this over here and move it over to three when you level up. You know the same amount of spells, but you can rearrange your spells on your character sheet when you level up one spell at a time. You're enjoying it too much. Oh, Haikuno, can you really do that? I don't know. All right, well, let's get up and take a break, everyone. Let's stretch. We'll talk about which spells that, uh, that he'll take uh, here a little bit later. But we have the meat and potatoes of this character, and I want to start on the second character because we're going to roll either the Circle of Spores Druid or the Order Cleric. Uh, we didn't naturally roll into one of those, and I want to make sure we have one in our party to help bring more of this Ravnik and Flair to it. So let's get ready. Let's take a 10-minute break, everyone. You know, get a snack, a drink, whatever you need, uh, and we'll come back. Uh, let's see, I have 2.12 a.m. my time, I guess around uh, 2.22 and we will make our other character, and then we can discuss any particular spells that go along with it. And I'll explain also how the uh, how you can weave in your Golgari affiliated spells. Haikuno, thank you very much for that follow, by the way. Because being a member of the Golgari swarm, you have a spell list that's open to you on the side of just being a bard. You have guild spells. And I'll, I'll go through and explain that. But let's get up and take a break, all right? <laughs> 